Hey guys, uh, so this is the first time that I've done one of these tutorials, um, but I wanted to kind of walk through my process of restoring a photo, uh, colorizing it, and then adding a couple more details to, to make it look more realistic. Um, because of the length of this, I'm probably going to separate into three parts, but just wanted to start off with the photo restoration. Uh, this is a picture of, of my grandfather. Um, he actually died when my dad was very, very young, so I've never got a chance to meet him. And uh, coming across these photos, I've always wanted to take older photos and, and fix them and, and make them look a little bit better. So as far as restoring the photo, uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a really good resolution, right? So what I usually do is that I make sure the canvas is the appropriate dimensions. And then once the canvas is the appropriate dimensions, you can then you can then insert the photo, right? If you have a really small photo and it's very low quality, it's gonna be really hard to make that a good quality product. So probably one of the most important things is make sure you have good quality and then also making sure that you have enough layers to do what you need to do. Uh, the quality, I look at 300 DPI is probably a really good indicator uh, and then layers, I need to make sure I have at least 15 layers. So right here, this looks good. 19 layers, 18 available with the background. And then those of you who want to print out, just make sure that you have the correct, uh, the correct option on the, the quality of the color uh, if you want to print it. I'm not going to concern myself too much with that. Uh, looking at the dimensions, I think this looks good. Uh, and I think I'll start going and and uh, correcting some of the anomalies in in this picture. Uh, so you want to start off, look at the areas that I need to fix. From there, you can use what's the called the clone tool, and then the clone tool you can take areas that are around that anomaly and match them so you can cover up the scratches, the bumps, things of that nature. Now I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to use the clone tool and I'm also just going to use a basic smudge, honestly. In some of these older photos where you don't have the high depth that you would have in say today's pictures, digital pictures, uh, sometimes you can just get away with the smudge tool. But here on his forehead, I went ahead and used the clone tool and that looks pretty good. Now I got a large scratch here. This one is gonna take a little bit more finesse. Um, so I'm gonna try to use both the clone tool, uh, but ultimately in the end, I'm probably just going to use more smudge and try to match up the colors and the tones. Um, as you can see, it does take some skill using the clone tool, just because remember you're using whatever that circle is on, that area is then cloned. So you'll see, I kind of am not really good at this, um, but if you get too close to the actual mark, then you're gonna add that mark again, just like I did there. So once again, just kind of showing you the tools available. I'm ultimately just probably gonna take a smudge tool and, and do this, fix this one. One thing that you do wanna make sure is that the colors and the tones match up. Um, I'm kind of going through this really quick, uh, so it's not as good as I would like it, but it, it, it works for me. Um, and so you can color pick, uh, you can smudge. Smudging to me is kind of the easiest with these lower quality photos. Um, you can kind of get away with that. Uh, with higher quality photos, you definitely either want to uh, clone uh, or you can also do a copy and paste, try to find the same texture, the same tone, the same colors, and copy and paste. Now, that said, a lot of what we're going to be doing later on will correct some of these anomalies that you're kind of seeing right now. Like, oh, well, that, that color just doesn't completely match up. When you get to actual colorizing the photo and then applying, you know, your, your multiply and highlights, your shadows and highlights and things like that, a lot of these things are gonna go away. You're not gonna notice them so much. Um, but these large scratches do do take time. Uh, and you want to make sure that you, you know, make it look like <laughs> there are no scratches there. Um, 
sometimes it can look a little blotchy. It can look a little uh, drowned out. But once again, as you get more and more into this process and you do this more and more, uh, it becomes a little bit easier. And once again, I'm showing a lot of the clone tool here. Uh, but ultimately, I think in the end, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to smudge this and start correcting it, color picking, that type of thing to, to make it look decent. I did notice that when I was using the clone tool, in the end, I was still just using the smudge <laughs> to, to blend in the colors. Uh, I just, I wouldn't, I wasn't finding the right, what I was looking for with, with the clone tool. Um, but the clone tool offers a very easy way of covering up things. Um, it's just that if you have scratches and things like that, where the colors are different, the tones are different, um, smudging might, might be your best option there. Especially if it's, like I said, a lower quality photo. That's something that's not going to be as recognizable in the end. Now, one thing I did notice here is I got a scratch that's going all the way down, right? And it's going to be kind of hard to recognize that, uh, the, the color of the jacket. So what I decided to do is I was like, well, hey, maybe I can just copy the color of the jacket from the other side. And then I can... Uh, using the freehand tool here, draw the shape around it, and then copy and paste this section, this, this section, flip it, uh, and then now I've got the collar uh, for the other side of the jacket. It's cheating a little bit, I know, um, but it, uh, it makes things a little bit easier, and it also gives me points to look for when it comes to uh, the colorization uh, or not necessarily the colorization, but matching the tones when those scratches, because those scratches, it can, it can be kind of tricky to figure out, oh, well, where's the end of the jacket? Where does the jacket and the shirt begin? That type of thing. One thing, though, is when you are cutting and pasting like this, is you have to try to get to match the environment where you're pasting it in. So here, once again, I use a little bit of blur tour, the blur tool. Uh, to just kind of give those edges not as sharp, make smooth those edges down. Uh, the other option that you could use here is a Gaussian blur. Uh, the Gaussian blur is kind of quicker, um, but I wanted to just give this a little more finesse and, and apply my own, have control over the, the blurring. Uh, so I just use the smudge tool and go along the edges uh, to see if I can get this to match up a little bit more. So now I'm going back and looking at this huge scratch that goes right down the middle of both the jacket, the shirt, uh, and even into the neck area. Um, so once again, I can try to use the clone tool here, but uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and smudge and try to reconstruct the undershirt as much as I can. I just realized that this is actually going to be a difficult project to reconstruct the, the undershirt, but we'll see what we can do here. So once again, just trying to recreate the undershirt here, uh, adding a little bit of, you know, using the, the touch tool to uh, match the color as much as I can, and then blending it using the, the smudge tool. Now granted, this is uh, definitely could be done better. Um, I just, I was a little bit, not necessarily in a rush, 
um, but I wanted to go ahead and provide a tutorial on, on some of the more important things. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on, on that undershirt. Since I didn't have that in the original picture, it's kind of hard to kind of guessing <laughs> what, what, what it looked like. And then sometimes just color picking is the easiest way to go, especially when you have a huge scratch, you kind of know what color is going to match well. Uh, just doing a color pick right next to it, kind of the same function as the clone tool, uh, but it's a little bit quicker. And then once again, I go in and blend the two colors just so the, the tone looks a little bit better and it's not as uh, it's not as blatant, <laughs> you know, because sometimes if you don't blend it very well, you can easily tell that you just applied color. Uh, and then now I just kind of go back and look at some of the smaller anomalies, things that will affect the, the colorization of the photo. And once again, looking at shadows, where the light might be hitting, taking those things into consideration. So once I'm happy with the uh, final product, as far as the ret retouching up the photo, I go ahead and I combine the collar and the main picture back together so it all becomes so it all becomes one one image